Welcome back to Fish on Luke. Today we are going to be discussing catching sturgeon through the ice. Some people may find it a little overwhelming. There's probably a lot of questions involved in it. There's always a lot of questions going on online. So I figured what would be better than to make a basic ice fishing for sturgeon 101 video so all you guys can uh, kind of click through and figure out exactly what you need to know and hopefully I will cover that during this video. The first thing you need to figure out if you want to go catch sturgeon on the ice is one, does the body of water have sturgeon in it? Number two, is it legal to fish for sturgeon on rod and reel on that body of water? And that's a big deciding factor of where you're gonna go. There's not a lot of options when you put both of those two together. Um, one of the main areas people fish for lake sturgeon, well known besides the Rainy River, is the St. Croix River around Bayport, Stillwater, um, Hudson area. Um, it's a lot more safe for ice than the rest of the river and there's a lot of fish in that stretch of river. So finding the body of water with the fish, number one. Next, you're obviously going to want to try to figure out where the fish are moving, where the fish are feeding. And this can range anywhere from 10 to 50 feet of water. It really depends. My go-to, if you want to find lake sturgeon through the ice, Find the shallow spot, find the break, and find the basin. Fish right at the basin. Anywhere in the basin is always going to be a decent spot to find uh, lake sturgeon. Keep in mind, you can catch them up in 8 to 10 feet of water on the top of flats as well. But primarily, you're going to want to focus your time in the basin of the body of water that you're fishing, especially uh, on the ice. Next, you want to know... What gear do you need to reel in these giant prehistoric fish out of the ice? It's not your typical pike fish, and it's not your crappie, it's not your walleye. These are special fish, and you do need special gear to get these fish topside. So, with that said, I have one behind me right here. I would suggest, along with others, any heavy, you know, maybe a really stiff medium heavy heavy extra heavy lake trout rod would suffice with an extended butt and this comes in handy when you're fighting the fish and they're really heavy you can use that long extra butt for a little more leverage when you're trying to get these fish up topside and this rod is a wolfram custom rod it's a really popular rod for the lake sturgeon uh, through the ice super heavy it's an extra heavy 42 inches. I wouldn't go any shorter than about 35, 36 inches. You want that leverage when pulling up these fish. And uh, to pair these rods, I would I would suggest a medium to larger size uh, bait caster if you so want to use bait caster reels. I do not suggest bait caster reels simply because you don't have the leverage when you're using a bait caster on top. It may sound weird and it's hard to explain, but when you fight a big sturgeon on top of the ice, you're gonna realize, man, a sturgeon or a spinning reel would be wonderful for this time. And you get a lot of leverage with this longer butt underneath your forearm when you're fighting these big fish. I would say any 2000 in series reel and above, any, the main thing I found, I bought a cheaper Daiwa reel. This isn't one of their top line, not even close. It's like a $30 reel. But I think this is a 2500 series. Yep, 2500 series. And that brought the drag on this reel from 11 pounds to 22 pounds. Um, so this is a super cheap, reliable reel with good drag. And you do want that good drag. If you're going to get all this beefy gear and you have 8 pounds of drag, that beefy gear is really not doing you any favors. Um, any medium to large size baitcaster will work as well. 6500s are great reels if you insist on using a baitcaster on the ice. Um, I would pair them with any braid. Personally, I run 30 pound braid. I know people that run 50, I know people that run 80. I think 80 for ice fishing surgeons is way too heavy. Um, I think 50 is okay. I think 30, 40 pound is just about perfect. Um, this is 30 uh, pound suffix 832. So nothing too crazy. It's a premium braid, but it's a great, great line. So that is the rods and the reels. If you want any more uh, information on maybe um, specific rods you're interested in buying, I would recommend a Wolfram Custom Rod 
or if you're in a little bit more of a budget and want something, it, it'll have a little shorter rear, rear butt on it, but the uh, Clam, uh, Jason Mitchell Mackinac rods uh, do a pretty good job on handling these big sturgeon. Then they do make extra heavy on that too. So, But I suggest the Wolfram Custom. Um, this is not a paid promotional video on Wolfram. He just does an amazing job building rods. So, Rods and reels is covered. Next is terminal tackle. All right, for terminal tackle, it can differ from person to person. Um, I pretty much only used to use a, I have it here, right here. This is a VMC Tingler Spoon. Upgraded hooks, upgraded rings. It's a super, super light spoon. And you want it to be light, specifically on the St. Croix River in the basin, is because it is super, super silty. And when you put a camera down, which I have done now, um, even your camera, when you drop your camera to the bottom and let it go down, it's completely covered in silt when you drop it down. And anything heavy, um, you don't want the sturgeon to feel it when they're sucking this up off the bottom. Um, another thing I've been using is this rig. I learned this from uh, Darren a while back and tried to do some renditions of it. It's just a treble hook with a, uh, just a quarter ounce barrel weight on there and some beads so they this they're free the weight's down the bottom but they're free to suck this end up super simple i got a slip a little slip on there um you can use a standard j hook you can use a j hook on a spoon you can use a j hook on this rig you can just use a plain j hook with a little tiny just a carolina rig really it's up to the imagination what you use my idea is it's super silty and I don't want the sturgeon to know they're sucking up my bait and it has a hook on it. So those tingler spoons are great because they're super, super light. Um, they're almost like a hollow tin spoon. So from there, I think the next thing would be um, how you set up your rod in the hole. Now, people use the snowman or the pendulum effect. That's what I use personally. Um, some people, I will explain that later in the video, I might add. Um, some people run just a uh, strand, standard uh, slip bobber rig, and some people put it so it's straight up when it hits the bottom, it's perfectly straight up and down the bobber. Not there's no give, there's no it's not up, it's right on bottom, and then the bobber straight up and down. Some people, which I tried yesterday for the first time, is I set it my slip so my bobber was perfectly at a 45 degree angle, so I know if that bobber got bit, that the bobber would stand up. And it's those key factors on visualization, and that's why I like to use the snowman, the snowman method, the uh, pendulum, the one that Blake came up with um, from Northwoods Angling. It is easy to not pay attention and to still see a bite, and that's the main thing. When you're chatting with the boys or the girls, and um, you're like, "Man, they, they bite so light." Keep that in mind. They bite light. So the pendulum thing, the snowman, is you take a slip bobber. I'll try to show you. I'm going to try to show a clip um, of the setup right here. You put your rod at a 45 degree and a rod holder over the top of the hole. And you all kind of move it to the side. You don't want your snow mound where your bobber's sitting directly below your rod. You want it to be able to swing in and pendulate right into the hole. That's a big word. Let's all say it together. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what you do is you grab... You put out a little extra line, and this is when, you're, when your bait's on the bottom, you let out some extra line, pretend this is, you know, I'll let some more line out. So you grab the line between the last eyelet, the tip, and the first eyelet, and you pull this out. So your rod's over the hole, this line's out. You build a snow mound next to your hole, away from your rod, so it's at an angle, not directly below, then your bobber's just hanging. You want it out to the side. And what you do, you modify a slip bobber. You cut out so it's not super tight, so you can get this bobber off if you need to get it off. So what I do, I don't even deal with, I don't grab it, I just grab my bobber, I hook the bobber from the first end of the eyelet to the first eyelet, and I pull that line to my snow mound and I set it just right so if anything touches it, this will swing into the hole off the snow mound. You lay it right on, make a little groove with your finger on the snow mound and you lay your bobber on it so it's almost 
almost falling off. And if you touch your main line, the bobber should swing into the hole. That is the whole idea um, for the snowman uh, pendulum effect of the bobber. So that's how that works. Um, you can do it however you want. I know guys that have ran bigger rods on, on the ice and they've um, put bells on the tips of their rods and uh, circle hooked them just like when you're boat fishing for sturgeon. So it's nothing crazy. So that is technique on catching these sturgeon. There's multiple ways and keep in mind they do bite very, very light. The next thing we're gonna talk about is bait selection. It's not very complicated. It's not, you don't have to overthink the bait selection when picking what bait you want for sturgeon fishing on the ice. Same as summer fishing. If you can get shad, try some shad, but the go-to are crawlers. That's really all you need to catch these giant fish through the ice. I put on a minnow on sometimes. Sometimes I just run crawler, but slab as many crawlers as you can onto the hook. And that would be the determining factor if you catch a fish or not, slab a bunch of uh, crawlers on your hook, drop it to the bottom. Another thing to consider is drilling a hole. A six inch single hole is not gonna suffice for a big sturgeon. An eight inch single hole is not gonna suffice for a big sturgeon. They will not fit up the hole. Mark my words, it ain't happening. I don't care how hard you pull on an eight inch, through up an eight inch hole with a 50, 60 inch sturgeon, it is not gonna fit in the hole. So keep that in mind when you're making holes. A lot of things people do is, some people do a single 10. Single 10 will hold a pretty giant fish. I mean, a 10 inch hole is a big, big hole. But for the most part, a lot of the guys do the three hole. Um, some people will connect three holes together to make a triangle. Depending on what state you live in, you can't get so wide in certain states, so be careful um, how big you're drilling your holes for the ice sturgeon. But the thing, keep in mind, you do, I do a triple hole close to each other, and I finish my holes off with this. I just connect the dots. So I don't have to worry about it sliding in or getting a weird bottom on the hole drill. Um, I... <laughs> I pretty much just um, drill three holes really close to each other and then finish it off with the uh, with the uh, ice saw. Ice saws are super easy. They look really aggressive and tough to use, but they are not hard to use. Super simple. I think the last thing I want to talk about is where to access the river in Bayport or around that area on Lake St. Croix. So. 3rd Street and 5th Avenue in Bayport is the access to the ice road. If you go turn by the marina, cross the railroad tracks, stay to the left, follow that through the condos, you're going to end up on the lake and it goes straight across and it'll angle towards the ferry landing on the Wisconsin side of the river, which is another access point to drive out on. I prefer the Wisconsin side on the ferry landing. It's a, it's a sand... Um, boat ramp used in the summer that you can drive down. You can't park down at the bottom, but you can park on the ice or you can park up top. There's limited parking up there, but anywhere you drive out right now, pretty much one of those two locations um, is probably the safer bet. You'll know if anyone else is driving out there and keep in mind, no ice is safe ice. Um, there's always a risk of going through. There's always a risk of finding a one weird air bubble or one weird spot on the ice. And that's up to each individual angler to uh, make sure you're careful and prepared um, for if something does happen. All right, I think that covers just about everything you need to know about targeting lake sturgeon through the ice. Hopefully you guys get out there, give it a try, and maybe you will even catch a giant. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Fish on Luke. If you did enjoy it, if you found it informative, please hit the subscribe button, and there's gonna be a lot more fishing content in the future. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of the winter.